us today. I pray you're having a blessed morning and a blessed day the rest of the day. Hallelujah. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, righteousness, peace, and joy in the world shall come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. O righteous Father, I come before you in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanking you, O God, for waking us up this morning. Thank you, O God, for watching over us and no harm or danger came near us of our dwelling. Thank you, God, for how you love us, that you did something about our situation. <coughs> Thank you, Father, for sending Yeshua, Jesus, not just to die for our sins, but to transform our lives. Thank you, Father, for raising him for our justification. Thank you for glorifying him when you said, This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Thank you, Father, for how you go to and fro in the earth, your eyes, just looking for someone to bless. So, Father, we ask you to stop by today and bless each and every one of us. In the name of Yahshua. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm suffering with allergies. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just let me get some water. <coughs> At least I think they're allergies. I'm not sure anymore. <coughs> Excuse me. I came down with something earlier <coughs> this week. And I'm, so I'm not sure if it's a little cold or it is allergy, but I rebuked that car. In the name of Yeshua the Messiah, send it back to the pits of hell from which it came. We also want to <coughs> lift up those people, families, who lost their homes, their cars, their boats, and people lost their lives, that God would give them double for what they lost. I'm just so thankful that <clears throat> it was uh, said that it was coming to Atlanta. We actually live in Locandale, but they didn't know how far it was going to reach. And I started praying. When I heard about the tornado, I was playing, praying for Florida, everywhere that it was supposed to go, that the Lord would protect the people, their home, their livestock. But I'm so grateful he passed over us, that no harm or danger came to us. I had said to my daughter, because it's a big tree, a couple of them, right by her bedroom. And I said to her, make sure you keep the news on. Because if that tree falls, it's probably going to hit right by your bedroom. So I was ner kind of nervous about that. And so I left the TV on and called myself going to watch and see what was happening. And all of a sudden the cable went out. The internet went out, so I didn't have a radio that I could actually play. I didn't think of putting it on my phone because we did have light. And so I could not sleep that well, just tossing and praying and hoping that it would pass over. But we know these things will happen because the Lord did not only say they would happen. He said they would intensify. That means they would get worse. 
So that's why I continue to encourage people to be forever you ready. Because we just do not know. I mean, there are times when they say it's not going to go someplace and the wind turn it and it can end up in a place that they did not predict. Because no one can say exactly where it's going to end and where it's not going to go. So we need to be in prayer and be ready. You know, sometimes people say, we need to pray. That's not enough. We need to pray, but we need some action behind our prayers. That means we need to get ourselves ready because the Bible says we are to do what? Control ourselves. You know, sometimes we want people to control us when we don't want to, when we want to do something, we want people to control that. But when we do not want to do something, we don't want people to have anything to do with that. Well, the Bible tells us again, control yourself. That means have self-control. So we are continuing with our study from <clears throat> Monday night. We love hearing from you. Your questions, comments, and prayer requests are always welcome and appreciated. So if you have a prayer request or a question or comment, please leave them there on the video. I can't see everything happening when I'm focused on God's Word. But I always go back and I look. So if anybody comment or ask a question, I answer that question to the best of my ability. Many times people just have prayer requests. And so we pray for anyone that stand in need of a prayer today, that God would meet every need according to his riches and glory in Yahshua the Messiah. But just in case we have anyone out there that's not in the family of God, the Bible teaches us we are to be justified by our faith. So I'm going through it fast because I go through it every time, beginning and the end, unless I forget going on. But God tells us how we are to be justified. That's by our faith the same way Abraham was justified by his faith. He believed on God and it was credited to him for righteousness. When we believe on God, it's credited to our account for righteousness. But the Bible said we must be put work with our faith in order for us to be made perfect. That word means complete. That's when Abraham put work with his faith. He didn't just believe. He had action. So we're not just to believe. We're to have action. Then the Bible tells us we're to confess that which we believe in. We confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua, which is the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts that God raised him, Yeshua, Jesus, from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For out of the heart, man believeth. Man continue to believe unto righteousness. And confession is made <clears throat> unto salvation. Romans 10 and 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mark 16, 16, he that believeth, he that continue to believe and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not, what's going to happen? They will be uh, be damned, according to Proverbs 28, 13. And so 1 John 1 and 9 tell us, if we confess our sins, he faithfully just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if anyone is in Yeshua the Messiah and they do not realize life is a process, that's what it is. In the process of time, things start to start happening. Just coming and saying, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe Jesus died and God rose him from the dead. Well, you can't stop there. That just get you into the family of God, justified by your faith when you believe that. Well, what happened when we come into a race and we sit down? Well, that means we fainted. And the Bible said, faint not. That means never give up. So it's continuation. Amen? So again, everyone is welcome. Uh, at last week, uh, as I said, I think it was just about the third teaching, because of this murderous spirit, the Lord kind of took me back to the book of Genesis. So we looked at Genesis, where the first murder actually began that was Cain killed Abel his brother 
And then we see what started happening from the foundation of the world when we go back to Genesis chapter 1. So that's what we're going to look at. But as I was studying this, I'm saying, Lord, show me how to put it together. And then I start focusing on that light and focusing on that darkness. And so we're going to use many scriptures that deal with the light and who the light is. And then we're going to look at that word darkness and who darkness is. And so when we know God made uh, Adam and Eve and then God starts creating uh, God, God started creating everything. That's why it said God spoke and the spirit moved. So God spoke, Yeshua created. And sometimes people can't see that. That's why it's good to look at other information that teaches us everything that was created was created through Christ, through Yeshua, and was made for him. And so sometimes we do not look at God spoke and the spirit moved. So in the beginning, God created, but he created through the same way people create today. And so God give us wisdom. God give us knowledge. God give us understanding and we can create things through. That means God give us that wisdom, that knowledge and that understanding how to do things. And so he does things through us the same way he did things through his son. So uh, we are picking up again on this word light and darkness, children and sons of the light and day. Well, we know when we look at night and day, God created what? God created the earth and there was light and there was darkness. As today, we have light. Tonight, we have darkness. But we have to look at it also in a spiritual way, which means God created light. Yeshua is light. God created the darkness. But you would never see, or I have not, never seen, where God said darkness was good because darkness represents Satan. Uh, light represents Yeshua. So he said, when God, the Bible said, when God created the light, he said it was what? Good, but not the darkness. So let me follow what I have here. <clears throat> One people ministry again. They're coming from John 17, Galatians 23, as we are to be one, as Colossians says, one body called to be a part of single body. As I said, I'll continue to share that. People will come on, they say, oh, she's going through the same thing. No, I do the opening, and then I have key words that do, uh, or verses that the Lord put in my spirit to keep sharing so people can understand the word one doesn't mean one person all the time. The word one, unity, the word one uh, mean many as we are to be one, which means we are what? We are many. This is my portion. Understanding light and darkness from the foundation of the world. God said, God saw, God made. God saw that the light was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Notice, he never said darkness was good here. He said the light was good. And he divided the light from the darkness. Well, remember, the Bible is going to teach us about being in the light and also walking in darkness. And so there's a separation between light and what? Darkness. <clears throat> light and darkness day and night. Light, day, tree of life in the garden, good shepherd, Yeshua Jesus. Well, many times again, we need to go back and study from the beginning. Remember when the Bible said the tree of life was also in the garden. Well, the tree of life is who? The tree of life is Yeshua Jesus. So I'm going to say it again. Light, day, tree of life in the garden. Good shepherd, Yeshua Jesus. Now, I'm reading John 10 and 11. <clears throat> I am the good shepherd. Remember, created the light, and he said the light was good. So, Yeshua is what? 
the good shepherd because many shepherds went before but he was the good shepherd from the foundation of the world we sometimes we can't see it until we go back to the foundation of the world and um, the good shepherd the good shepherd laid down his life for the sheep noted he did not say here for the lambs because you see there are sheep and there are lambs lamb is a baby sheep are mature so he laid down his life for the sheep but remember he died for the sin of the whole world but babies may not know him oh but now he can reveal himself even to a baby but sheep are mature and sheep know his voice and sheep does what sheep follow him uh, he said <clears throat> the lord is the shepherd of his people see he the good shepherd you go all the way back and you see the lord is the shepherd of his people where is that psalm 23 and verse 1 i don't die which is the lord the lord is my shepherd i like nothing well, when you go back there, you see the word Adonai in complete Jewish Bible. Again, always remember, both was called Lord. Both was called Adonai. And how do we know? You go back to what David said again. Adonai said to my Lord, or you see, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. So what was he saying? God said to his son, Yahshua, sit at my right hand. Because that's where Yahshua is sitting. When he went back to heaven, he took his seat where? On the right hand of God. Notice God said the light again was good, not the darkness. And have no fellowship. With the unfruitful works of darkness. See that? Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works. Which mean work that doesn't produce. Unfruitful. No good. Rotten fruit. It said darkness. But rather reprove. Expose them. That's Ephesians 5, 11 from the King James uh, Version of reading. So when he said, have no fellowship with the unfruitful work of darkness. So if a person is in darkness, you should, what? You should separate yourself from the darkness. Because the darkness can't overcome the light, but the light can overcome the darkness. And that's why we are encouraged to be the light not darkness, to be the light of the world. Because again, Yeshua Jesus is the light of the world. And he tell us we are to be what? The light of the world. See, not darkness, but we are to be what? Light. Light and darkness, children and sons of the light and day. Belongs to the light and the day. Notice, belongs to the light and the day. That's Yeshua, because Yeshua is the light. So you know, daytime, there is light, unless it gets so dark and the storm and it get dark, but it's still light. You can see a little bit at least. And so day is light. Light is what's shining here. So we are to what belongs to the light and the day. Why? Knowledge. Because if we belong to Yahshua, we have knowledge. Because the light and the day help one not to stumble. That's why. Notice, night and day, uh, night can help one to stumble because they can't see where they're going. Let me read the whole thing. Belong to the light and the day. Knowledge. Because the light and day help one not to stumble. But what about darkness? Do not belong to the darkness and the night without knowledge, not knowing because the darkness and the night will cause one to stumble. But we know that. It makes sense. Common sense tells us that. Darkness or the night can what? Help one to stumble. 
what, which mean if you have no windows or anything and all the lights out, it's pretty dark. But at nighttime, it is dark. Nothing is peeping through the, uh, the window unless the moon is really bright. And so we are to be careful not to walk in the darkness because we walk in the darkness. We do not have knowledge or we reject knowledge. And eventually we will what? Stumble. And then we will what? Fall. So you can stumble and not fall, but you can stumble and you can what? Fall. You know, sometimes you stumble and you catch yourself. Now we go to John 16. And this is a verse that will help explain it. Jesus warned, yes, sure, and comforts his disciples. These things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. Notice that. He didn't say you would not. He said, these things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time is coming that whosoever kills you would think that he offered God service. Why? Because he's in the darkness. And these things they will do to you because they have not known. See, darkness means no knowledge. And so he said people would do these things to us because they have not known the Father nor me. In other words, they didn't know. See, you could believe something, but not know it. So you could tell someone about the Father. Sometimes they'll believe it, but they don't know it. You could tell someone about Yeshua, Jesus. They might believe it, but they don't know. Why? Because see, they go and somebody else says something different because they really don't know. They're not sure. Now they'll lean to somebody else understanding. Oh, I thought that's what it was. But now someone says something else, and I believe that. Well, what happens if they do not go back and look at the Word of God for themselves? Read it for themselves. Now they can have knowledge. Now they what? They know. Now there are people who cannot read. They cannot see. God can manifest, make His Word known through His Spirit. Because they can't read it. They can't see it. What? Uh, which reminds me of <clears throat> years ago, we were at a conference, I think it was. And there was a blind man there. And he was testifying to something. And he says, I once could see. He said, and then I became blind. And when I became blind, that's when I really could see. Just think about that. That's when I really could see, although he was blind. But what was he seeing? His natural eyes was okay at one time. But he was spiritually in darkness. He couldn't see. But once he became blind, that's when he was able to see. Kind of reminds me of Paul. Paul could see. But remember when he got knocked down to the ground and he was blind? And he prayed that someone would come and lay their hands on him. And Ananias went and laid his hand on him. And scales fell off his eyes so he could what, see. So he could say, I once was blind because he was persecuting the church. And, and he didn't care who it was, putting people in jail, standing there when Stephen got stoned to death because he was blind. But once his spiritual eyes became open. He was no longer in the darkness. He was no longer blind. That's why the Bible says he went straight forth into to the synagogue teaching, yes, you're sure the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, is the Son of God. But when his natural eyes was open, he didn't believe it. He would persecute the church. He believed in God. But he didn't believe Yeshua Jesus was the Son of God until he became blind. And his eyes was what? Reopened. So that blindness... Is darkness. It's like at night. Hallelujah. So, uh, Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5, 5. For you are all people who belong to the light. Well, who do we belong to? We belong to Yeshua. Yeshua is the light. So that's why it says, for you are all people 
who belongs to the light, who belongs to the day. Notice that, light and day, not darkness, not night. We don't belong to the night or to the darkness. Show you again. We do not belong to the night or to darkness. But what did they belong to? Belongs to the light and the day. So that's very important to notice those words, night and, day, uh, night and darkness and day and light. Nothing new under the sun is Ecclesiastes 1, 9, 11, because we're returning back again, returning to the foundation of the world, continuing from Monday night teaching Genesis 1. Both light, the Son of God, and darkness, Satan, were there from the foundation of the world. Both. Say it again. Light was there from the foundation of the world. That's the Son of God. And darkness was there. And God separated that darkness from the light. Darkness represent again Satan. They was always there from the foundation of the world in the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Well, we see heavens is what? Plural. Some people just think of heaven. Remember Paul mentioned the third heaven? And so that's why heaven is plural. So we're just going to look at a few verses that deal with heavens, not single heaven, but heavens, right? Understand the light and darkness from the foundation of the world, Genesis 1 and 2. The earth was unformed and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, this is where you see Yeshua. And the Spirit of God, see, Yeshua, God spoke, Yeshua created. We're going to see that. So let's go back and read that. The earth was uh, unformed and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the, suff the suffix of the water. Then God said, let there be light. There it is. Let there be light. Right? Well, Yeshua is light. But we can think of light during the day and darkness at night. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. But watch this. God saw that the light was good. Notice, he didn't say the darkness. Light, because Yeshua's light, same as darkness. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. In other words, if we're in the light... We are to be separated from the darkness. That's why the Bible says if a person is in darkness, you are to reprove them. And so God saw that the light was good and God divided the light from the darkness. Remember, you are people of the light and the day, not of night and darkness. Because there's two separation there. If we are light and we are of the day, we cannot be night and darkness. You're going to be one or the other, in the light or in what? Darkness. God saw that the light was good and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day. That's why it tell us again, be children of the day, right? So God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So there was evening and there was morning one day. Well, now you go back to the natural day and the natural night. But we're to be spiritually in the light and day, not in the night and darkness. Let's see here. Oh, let me go down. 1 Corinthians 3.13, reading from King James Version. Now remember, you belong to what? The light. Okay, now you go to 1 Corinthians 3.23. I'm reading uh, King James and then Complete Jewish Bible. You and ye are Christ's. Notice, ye are Christ's. And Christ 
It's God. In other words, we belong to Christ when we're in the light and the day, and Christ belongs to God. Now, complete Jewish Bible. And you belong to the Messiah. In other words, we belong to Christ when we are in Christ. And the Messiah belongs to God. Showing us how when we are in the light, we belong to Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah. And the Messiah, Jesus, belongs to his Father, God. Mark 9, 41, King James Version. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ Messiah. That's what we're looking at, who we are to belong to. Verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. Romans 1, 6. Called to belong to Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ. So we was called to belong to the Son of God, Yeshua the Messiah. Romans 7 and 4, complete Jewish Bible. Thus, my brothers, you have been made dead with regard to the Torah law through the Messiah's body, so that you may, not that you will, so that you may, not that you shall, so that you may belong to someone else. Notice, we're to die to that old law, the law that imputed sin upon us, we're dead to that law. Sin is no longer imputed. Now sin is something that we do. Let me finish that verse. Do, do, do. Let me read the whole verse. Thus, my brothers, you have been made dead with regard to the Torah, meaning law, through the Messiah's body, so that you may belong to someone else, namely, the one who has been raised from the dead in order for us to bear fruit for God. So there it is. We are dead to the old law that imputed sin on us because of the first Adam. Now we do not belong to Satan. We are not in the nature or should not be in the nature of Satan. But we're to be in nature, in the nature of that second Adam. And we are to what? Bear fruit for God. A tree that does not bear fruit, what happened? In the end, it would be what? Cut it that cut down and burn up. That's why we go to John chapter 15, perfect example. A Roman 8, 9, complete Jewish Bible. But you, you do not identify with your own nature, but with the spirit. Now, I'm going to use the word provided. Provided the Spirit of God is living inside you. For anyone who doesn't have the Spirit of the Messiah Christ doesn't belong to him. See, we are to have the Spirit of Christ. That same mind that was also in Yeshua the Messiah, which means Yeshua had the mind of his Father. Galatians 3.29, complete Jewish Bible. Also, if you belong to the Messiah Christ, you are a seed of Abraham and heir according to the promise. But notice what it said. And if you belong to the Messiah Christ, you are a seed of Abraham. That means we are the seed of Abraham because Christ is a seed of Abraham. And heir according to the promise. Just like if you have a will, and you have five kids, they are heir to what you have. Notice God said again, the light was good, not the darkness. Belongs to the light, not darkness. Reading King, New King James Version. You are all sons of light. See that? You are no longer to be children, but we are to be sons of God. Now, see, sometimes you're going to see sons and daughters. That means sons and daughter. That means we're to be mature, not no children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine where man lay in wait to deceive. You are all sons of light. Sons of who? Light. And sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Again, that's a separation. Night and darkness, light and what day? 1 John 1, 5, complete Jewish Bible. 
And this is the message which we have heard from him and proclaimed to you. God is light. See, God is light. There's no darkness in God. Remember, he separated the light from the darkness. Like, I don't like the darkness. I like the light. So God is light. Yeshua became the light of the world. And then he tell us we are the light of the world. So God is light. He was always light. He was never darkness. No darkness in God. So it says God is light and there's no darkness in him. I didn't realize that was the next part of it. God is light and there's no darkness in him. None. So there's no darkness in God. So we're not to have darkness, we're to have light and be people of the day. John 3, 21, complete Jewish Bible. But everyone who does what is true comes to the light. So that all may see that his actions are accomplished through God. So again, Jesus is the light. And when we are, but everyone who does what is true. That's what you got to look at that word true. Come to the light. Jesus the light. And he said, if you come unto me, I, I will what? In no wise cast you out. And so we are to be light, which means children, sons and daughters of God. Because, now let me finish that. Oops, I didn't finish that. Because, see, this is where you have to, we need to keep reading. Because in connection with him, were created all things. That's Colossians 1 16, complete Jewish Bible. Because in connection with him, that's Yeshua Jesus, were created all things. All being created through him. See, when God spoke, the Spirit moved. So God spoke and created things through Yeshua, Jesus. And I tell people, do not miss that word through. It's so important. So let me finish that. Because in connection with him, that's Yeshua, Jesus, were created all things. All being created through him and for him. Again, at Colossians 1.16. Again, God saw that the light was good and God divided the light from the darkness. Let's be light, not darkness. Notice God said the light was good, not the darkness. Yeshua, Jesus, the light of the world. Say darkness, the God of the world. Sometimes people do not realize Satan is a God. But he's not our God when we're in Yeshua the Messiah and we're serving Yeshua the Messiah and we're led by the Spirit of God. We are not led by the same Spirit. So when we are led by the same Spirit, God... Uh, Satan is our God. He is our Father because we've been led by the wrong spirit, not by the Spirit of God. So if you were raised again with the Messiah Christ, then seek the things above. Well, again, things above, the Bible tells us. That's where Yeshua is sitting on the right hand of the Father. Colossians 3, Messiah Christ, 2 again. God the Father. How we lost the way because we do not hate every false way. False ways I hate. Psalm 119, 124, and 128. I said I would keep those verses before us. How we lost the way, true light. John 14, 6. Yeshua said, I am the way and the truth and the light. No one comes to the Father except what? Through me. Returning to Nothing new under the sun. Returning to the foundation of the world. Continue from Monday night teaching Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Understanding light and darkness from the foundation of the world. Genesis 1-2. The earth was unformed and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of God hovered over the surface of the water. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So there was evening, and there was morning one day. And have again, no fellowship with unfruitful work of darkness, but rather reprove them. That's Ephesians 5, 11. 
God said, let there be light, and there was light. So God saw that the light was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. I always remember, he never said darkness was good. Notice God said again, the light was good, not the darkness. We are to be good. People say, well, nobody can be good. Well, Yahshua, I always go back to what Yahshua says, if the good man had known. So that just ruled that out right there. Uh, Genesis 2 and 2, looking at the heavens, plural. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished along with everything in them, verse 4. Here is the history of the heavens, plural, and the earth when they were created. On the day when Adonai God made earth and heaven. Remember, Adonai is what? God the Father and Adonai sometimes is Yeshua, the Lord of the earth. I don't know, God made earth and heaven, Hebrew 1.10. Looking at the heavens again. In the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundation of the earth. Heaven is the work of your hand. See, there it is. God spoke, Yeshua created. Uh, King James Version. And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hand. Hebrew 4, 14. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who have passed through to the highest heaven, because there are lambs of heaven, and there is what? The highest heaven. Yahshua Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firm to what we acknowledge as true. King James Version, seeing this, uh, reading the same verse. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, which means that which we have confessed. Now, if you go back, and that's why you look at certain translation, you need a sharp eye. In, he, in Hebrews 4.14, complete Jewish Bible, it used heaven as single. But when you go to King James, because there are heaven, it's going to have an S as what? Plural, because there again, of more than one heaven, as Paul again speak of what? The third heaven. Hebrews 7.27. This is the kind of high priest. That meet our needs, speaking Yeshua Jesus. Holy, without evil, without stain, set apart from sinners. Remember, we're to be what? Set apart from sinners. Yeshua Jesus was separated, set apart for sinners. Although he went to deliver them, he went to teach them, but he wasn't part of them. As some people, let me finish the verse. Is a holy without evil, without stain, set apart from sinners, and raised higher than the heavens. Notice that. Not use plural. Raised higher than the heavens because he went to the highest heaven. That's where God dwell. And so many times we are calling ourselves sinners. Uh-oh. You better be careful. But I always say call yourself what you are. If you're a sinner, call yourself a sinner. But I'm not going to call myself a sinner because I know if I'm a sinner and God send Yahshua back for me, I'm going to hell. I'm not going to heaven unless I was in Yahshua. I'll go get to a heaven but not to the highest heaven and be judged in what cast me out down to what a place called hell. So don't, do not call yourself a sinner unless you're practicing sin. That's what a sinner is, someone that practices sin after they have the knowledge. That doesn't mean you will not sin. That's why I said if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Yeshua, who go to the Father on our behalf, who is the mediator between us and God. So that means I'm not practicing sin, but there are times I will sin, but that does not make me a sinner unless I'm sinning willfully after I have the knowledge. Therefore, there's no more sacrifice for sin. I bring myself back under the control of Satan, which means back into bondage. And we don't want to do that, do we? Hebrew 8.1. Here is the whole point of what we have been saying. 
we do have just such a high priest as has been described. And he does sit where? At the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Now, Hebrew use, uh, I can't pronounce that word, it's H A capital G D U L A H, but it means the majesty. Psalm 110, the Psalm of David. I do not say it to my Lord. Well, this is what we were saying before when you see the word Adonai and Lord. That means both was called Adonai, both was called Lord. So Adonai said, that means God said to my Lord, to his son, Yeshua, sit at my right hand until I make your enemy your footstool. Because you see that in, in the Bible, I'm thinking like four different times. Again, God saw the light was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. We are to be light, we are not to be darkness. Notice God said the light was good, not the darkness. So, where I stop at Genesis uh, 5, I want to pick up on verse 5 in Genesis, uh, Genesis 5, uh, 1. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So, there was evening, and there was morning one day. Now, let's look at these words light and i'm going to be out of time and so john three nineteen, complete jewish bible now you focus on light so you know light spiritual that's yeshua and we are to be children of the light god is light no darkness in him so go to eight john eight twelve. read from complete jewish bible uh first one th john three nineteen. now this is the judgment the light has come into the world. So now you know it's not talking about daylight. Although we have daylight, light has come into the world. Yeshua Jesus, the Son of God, has come into the world. But people love the darkness. See, light and darkness. People love the darkness. Satan is darkness rather than the light. Why? Because their action was wicked. And so when we love darkness that because our action are wicked but if we walk in the light while we have the light we will not stumble and sometimes we will stumble but we will not fall but if we keep walking in the darkness the night eventually we keep stumbling and we will what fall john 8 12. yeshua spoke to them again I am the light of the world. See, that light represents Yeshua from the book of Genesis. He was in the midst of the garden. Whoever follow me will never walk in darkness. Notice, not whosoever believe me. Whosoever follow me will what? Will never walk in darkness, but will have the light which give light. Because he's the light, and he's the one give what light. First John two eighteen, King James version. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which things is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past. See, darkness need to go away, and the true light now shineth. Yeshua is the true light. Complete truth by the same verse. Yet, yet, I am writing you a new commandment, and it really is seen both in him and in you, because the darkness is passed away, and the true light is already shining. That means it to what? Continue to shine. Let your light so shine that man will see who? Your good work and glorify who? Your Father in heaven. First John 1 6, complete truth Bible. If we claim to have fellowship with him while we are walking in the darkness, we are lying and not living out the truth. So what is it saying? If we say we have fellowship with him and we are in the darkness following Satan, it says we are lying. And what? And not living out the truth. That means we are lying and the truth is not in us. 1 John 2, 9. Why? Because we're not following Yeshua. We're following Satan. 
uh, First John 2, 9, King James Version. He that says he's in the light, in Yeshua, and hates his brother, is in darkness even until now. John 1, 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not suppressed it, because the light can shine in the darkness. In other words, at night, your light's out, that's darkness. But when you cut the lights on, it's no longer dark. Now you have what? Light. So because you have light, you're not going to stumble unless you're not just careful. Like sometimes you're just not careful and you just trip, but you don't fall. Hallelujah. The light shine in the darkness, outshine the devil. And the darkness has not suppressed it. Satan can't stop you from, shine, from letting your light shine. Only you, because you're free. To let it shine or cover your light and put it on the bed where nobody can see it. John 8, 12 completes your Bible. Yahshua spoke to them again. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light which gives light. John 12, 35. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk. Why you have the light. In other words, walk while you have me. Lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. Because you can't see. And you're walking in darkness. That's how we can end up what? Stumbling. John 12, 46. I am come a light in the world. That whosoever believeth, that may continue to, on me should not, not will not, not shall not, should not abide in the darkness. And these are words, sometimes when we study our Bibles, sometimes we do not focus on words like should and shall and may and will. Anytime you see that word should, like uh, uh, John three sixteen, should not perish, that means it's up to you and I to perish or not. Because he didn't say shall not. He did not say will not. Only in bad translation. Should not. Because if we're walking in the light, we should not abide in darkness. So if you're light, you should not abide in Satan. Because you're the light, because you're in Yeshua, and you're letting your light shine because you're in him, and he is light, and God is light. So you should not walk in Satan. You should not allow Satan to lead you. You're to walk in the light where you can see. Yeshua is that light, so you can see where you're going. But Satan come where? To blind us after we can see whether you believe it or not. Because that's when you're going to be tempted. That's when you're going to be tried. Once you're in Yahshua, you're taken to the wilderness of sin to be tried by the enemy. Just like Yahshua was. But we are to continue to do what? Abide in the light. I want to finish the word with light. Uh, uh, the scripture, Roman 839, complete Jewish Bible. Neither power above nor power below, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which comes to us through, remember, I always forget the word through, through the Messiah, Yeshua, our Lord. So what is this saying? When I am in Yeshua, no powers plural above, nor powers, plural, below, nor any other cre created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God. Because God so what? Love the world, but God hates sin, and he will judge sin even though he loves us. The same way, you can have children, and you can love those children with all your heart, but then there come a point that you can do nothing with those children. You say, I'm just going to give them up to the Lord. Kind of like Paul said he was going to give him over to Satan. That his soul might be saved. 
in the last days. And so sometimes you just say, I can't do anything with you, so you can't stay in my house anymore. You just got to get out. And that's why God would give a person a reprobate mind. That's a mind because he gave them so many different chances. And he'd give them a reprobate mind. That mind God can't deal with. He just lets you do whatever you want to do. But he's there if you want to come back and you're not continuing sinning willfully after you know better, after you have the knowledge. That's why the Bible said just like a dog returning back to his vomit. That means he threw up some stuff that was no good, making him sick. And then he's going to go back and eat it again. It's like God bring us out of this world. But he tell us we're not to return back to the world. If we are new, we're to walk in the newness of life and die to that old life because that old life will take us back, will bring us back into darkness, which is in bondage, right back under the control of Satan. So it be the Lord's will. Let me, uh, I'm going to stop here. And it be the Lord's will. We'll pick up on this subject tomorrow. We looked at light. And then we're going to go into darkness. We looked at some of the verses that deal with with that word darkness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good to see you, Denise. Good to see you. Uh, Louise, sis, and Perlene. Good to see you all. Thank you all for joining. And I pray if you came on late, go back and watch the video from the what? From the beginning. It's kind of like you start watching a movie. But if you do not watch the beginning, you're going to be lost. And then, if you do not watch the end, you don't know how it's going to end. So, let's be light. Let's come out of the darkness. I want to look for that phrase I wrote uh, earlier. Where did I put it? Mm -mm -mm. Hmm. Uh, I'm just trying to find something. Where I put those? Oh, here it is. Light and darkness, children and son of the light, belong to the light and the day. That means we have what you call knowledge. And because we have knowledge, we will not stumble. It'll help us because we're in the light, we're in the day. Do not belong to the darkness and the night without knowledge, not knowing. Because the darkness and the night will cause one to stumble. You do not want your brother and sisters to stumble. That's why the Bible says, lay not a stumbling block before your brother. So, which means many times people are teaching in a certain way that doesn't help, that does not bear fruit, but causes people to stumble. Because... They feel like, I'm in Christ, I don't need to change. I'm in Christ, and I'm on my way to heaven. Remember, you can be in Christ and go to a heaven, because again, heaven is a plural. Go to a heaven and stand at the judgment seat of Christ and be cast back down to a place called hell. That's why you always look at what Yeshua says. He that exalted into the heaven shall be cast back down to hell. We, when we are in Christ, we can be sinning, but we are doing and doing ungodly deeds that is not living like ungodly people who have no hope, who are without God. And because we are living and we are not producing fruit, we will be judged and cast back down. To hell. Always search the scriptures. Take a key word that you're concerned about and search that word out. That's what I do. I would take a word and I would search that word out from the beginning of time through revelation. And sometimes they're in there like 200 sometime and I read them all but I might not share them all because this is how we can rightly divide the word of truth. In the beginning God in the beginning, Yahshua was there from the foundation of the world. And how do I know? Because once at the end of the last world,
Christ appeared before the Father to put away sin forever. The Bible teaches us that this world has not ended. Even common sin tell us what's the end of the other world. It just wasn't manifest to some people. Today, it's just not manifest to some people. It's not made known to them. And that's why Yeshua said, if you keep my commandment, I will manifest. That means I will make myself known to you. And that's why he told those disciples, everything that my father has made known to me, I have made known to you. And so when we study the word of God, he made things known. His secret plan was Christ from the foundation of the world. A secret plan, Christ. That's God's secret. That was hidden. But it's no longer to be hidden. It is to be made manifest. That's why the Bible says it pleases God to hide a thing. But the honor of the king is to search out the matter. That means search out what is hid because he loved to hide things. And, the, and you think you, you, if I hide a thousand dollars and I tell you the thousand dollars is hidden, but you refuse to look for it, how are you going to find it? You're not going to find it because you was too lazy to look for it. And so many times, secrets are hidden, but people are too lazy to look for them, or they're so blind, they feel like they don't need to look for it. That's why we need to search the Word of God today more than ever. If it's true, receive it. If it's a lie, spit it out. Hallelujah. Once again, if we have anybody out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, the Bible teaches us how we're justified by our faith. If we believe on God and believe that God raised his son, Yeshua Jesus, from the dead, that's what justifies us. But then we are to get into him, get to know him. We are to confess him. That's why in my song I say, if we confess with our mouth, the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt, S-H-A-L-T. And some people will say, why is she saying shalt? Because that's what the Bible says, shalt. And I wanted to make sure I didn't use a word that could cause someone to stumble and say, thou shall not, uh-uh. Is thou shalt not. Shalt and should is different than shall and will. And so that's why we search out the word of God so we don't get confused. Then we are to confess and believe in our hearts that God raised his son, Yeshua Jesus, from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For out of the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. Then you go to Mar uh, Romans 10 and 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then you go to Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Verse 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from what? All unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, 13, he that confesses and forsaketh his sin shall have mercy, but he that confesses and forsaketh not his sin will not prosper. That means you can't go forward. You must agree with God that sin is sin and repent in order to be forgiven. You can't be forgiven for something that you're wallowing in. It is impossible. I can't uh, wipe up something that I spill if it's not there. Once I spill it and I wipe it up, it's no longer there. That's why the Bible says the blood of Christ cleanses. That means when we confess and repent. That's why confession and repenting should be preached through all the nation. He didn't just say confession. He said, and repentance. That means confess and repent. Agree with God, turn away. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If we have anybody out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, just repeat after me. You justify by your faith if you believe as our father Abraham believed and is credit to our account for righteousness. I confess with my mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And out from my heart, I am to continue to believe unto righteousness. So, Father, I ask you to judge us, O oh God, because you are a righteous judge. But you judge us through your son, Yeshua, because Yeshua says, my father judged no one. All judgment is given unto me because I am the son of God. So God, we ask you to search our hearts in the name of Yeshua. 
If you find like a faith, oh God, renew our faith if we never had faith. If we had faith and we went away from faith, oh God, renew it. Those who have not been adopted in your family, God, I ask you to draw by your power. Because Yeshua said, no one can come unto me except my Father draw them. So God, I ask you to draw throughout this world today. Draw people, point them to your dear son. Because it was your son that gave his life willfully and came into this earth. That's why he said, no man took my life. I gave it willfully. And so God, let us not use Yeshua and crucify him all over again. So God, let us get into Yeshua and let us run this race with patience. Forget about our old lifestyle and press in for a higher calling in Yeshua the Messiah. God, we thank you. We bless you. We give you praise. We give you honor and glory. In the name of Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, Perlene was on this morning, and she's my witness. And it happened many times. I won't say it's going to happen every time. But I was dealing with something this week. I came down. I got congested. I'm not sure it was allergy or it was a little cold. I had to stay away from the babies, put a mask on. And so this morning I thought I could barely, I was going to be hoarse. I couldn't hardly talk. And I started coughing. But almost 99% of the time, when Satan tried to attack me, because most of the time I may say, <clears throat> but not a real call until I get online and so and on Facebook. And so when I started coughing, I said, I rebuked that cough in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. I sent it back to the pits of hell. Do you know I never coughed again? And it happened many times because we have power over certain things. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to happen every time because God will try us to see if we're going to continue to believe. Or we just uh, think he's going to do it every time because God did something 99 times. That doesn't mean he's going to do it 100 times. Hallelujah. But he's the same today as he was yesterday. Yeshua went about healing all that was sick and all that was pressed by the adversary because God was with him. I tell people. But I never say I will not get sick. But one thing I will say, I will not die sick. Because Yahshua took sickness away and placed it on their enemy. Hallelujah. I say, I'm not going to tell them to place it anywhere. Just take it away from me. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you all. Love you with the love of Yahshua the Messiah. <coughs> now I want to call. Father, we thank you and give you praise. In the name of Yahshua, we bless your holy name. <coughs> 